All right. Um, let's continue with what we were discussing about praying for family members. We said that we'll talk about praying for those who've gone away from God okay, or waywardness. So till now, what we've understood is that we have a spiritual influence on our own uh, family members and um, especially you know, people who are in authority, like parents, their words, their prayers make a big difference over the children. And similarly, uh, husbands and wives, because, you know, marriage is a covenant uh, with, with God at the center. So uh, there is a strong spiritual influence that God uh, allows in the marriage between spouses. OK, and we also saw the importance of using scripture to make declarations. Now, what if someone has gone away from the Lord, especially um, a child? OK, in the growing up years, uh, if at all a child, let's say they are not saved, they don't get saved or they were saved once. They were so passionate for the Lord and now they have gone away from God. So every time something like this happens, it's tough for the believer, whoever that is, whether the parent or you know the spouse or uh, you know anyone else, even outsiders. When we pray, it's very challenging to see uh, a person who is not following the Lord. So how do we deal with such a situation? Uh, practically one can um, uh, you know one can look at many instructions from god's word but today we'll focus on prayer but one thing which we will say is that we must let the holy spirit work in their life and we should not become you know like the junior holy spirit always telling them this is not right that's not right okay we were poking them and we are always telling them what is wrong so it's possible that we get into that mode of continuously instructing or, or uh, trying to convict them. But it that's not how it should be. We must pray. Yes, there are times when we have to suggest or teach, instruct. But ultimately, allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. He will work in their heart and let them come to their own decision of following Christ. We can't force. We can't. Um, you know, like push somebody into following Christ. So we need a lot of patience. Sometimes it's a matter of few weeks, months, maybe even years to uh, see somebody coming back to Christ. But we need to be patient with them. We need to be prayerful. So what helps a lot is when we are praying. We are holding on in prayer. That's, that's uh, you know, e extremely powerful when the parents or the family members, the loved ones, the church family, we're not giving up for this brother or sister. We are continuously praying. We are saying, Lord, uh, bring them back. Okay, Help them to leave their old ways and come back. For some time, even if we are praying, it may look like things are going from bad to worse. You know, has that ever happened uh, where we are praying? And we are hoping that good things will happen. But we notice that worse things are happening. And we feel like giving up again. But we need courage in the Lord. We need faith in God's word so that we don't give up, even when something like this happens. So there are many examples of people who've had praying uh, families, parents, and they have broken out of the chains. So let me. First, share a scripture with us, and then I'll share, you know, one or two examples. Isaiah 49, verse 25. Can someone read that verse loudly? But, Isaiah, yeah. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, mm -hmm. and the prey of the triple be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. So... You see, God says, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Pray of the terrible be delivered. So that means that God is able to rescue. He's able to rescue from very uh, 
tough captors or you know he's able to rescue from uh, a very strong oppressor so because he's able to deliver and rescue what are we saying our declaration is that god will contend god will contend with those who contend with us and god will save our children that's the declaration one can make it may feel like the the child okay let's just keep the child as the example it may feel like the child the son or the daughter is in bondage right now in a bondage of uh, mindset patterns sometimes they have a pattern of thinking and they are not giving up or uh, bondage of habits where they've developed certain bad habits it's destroying their health it's uh, destroying their relationships and we are watching this every day it's very hurtful it's very difficult but we know that god can deliver from a mighty oppressor so god is saying look i will save your children i can even from a very strong person who has caught them i can save them so we continue to declare that god you save our children you bring them out of that captivity you bring them out of those chains you bring them out of the darkness so it's almost a battle sounds like a battle right so we are praying we are pressing in we are declaring and we are saying god there's got to be deliverance now there are people who have as i said prayed for many years so you know i can think of um, one preacher of uh, in one of the revivals um he he was a, a preacher like whenever he would give the altar call hundreds and thousands of people would come running okay but as you as you um look at his past and his testimony so he shares how uh, he was actually a drug addict his mother was a praying woman but this person this preacher he was a drug addict okay and it was so bad the addiction that you know he went into injectable drugs and he would do that with his friends and he did not have a place to stay so they would all stay together and just do drugs and the mother knew everything can you imagine the plight of that mother what she may have gone through but she continued to pray she never gave up she would still go visit her son in that environment and once when she went apparently they had done drugs and uh, they had some wooden uh, you know ceiling and so they had stuck the stuck the needles so the roof was full of needles sounds terrible for a mom to walk into an environment like that but she saw all that she saw how her son had gone the opposite direction but she never stopped praying for her son she never stopped declaring over her son and you know he shares his testimony and he says that if it wasn't for the prayers of my mother and you know many others who loved me and cared for me i don't think i would have come out of those chains i was in bondage i could not even see what life is all about but because people were praying right it's warfare with the enemy so when people wander away most of the times it's because of demonic influence it's because of the influence of the world those things have pulled them and kept them but what does prayer do prayer breaks those chains amen and so this uh, individual he came out of all that and god used him so mightily i mean he's with the lord right now but uh, during his ministry powerful things took place but he talks about the power of prayer that delivered him from a difficult life and in our notes here we have the example of franklin graham so anyone knows billy graham yeah we all know billy graham because he's so popular you know as a, a you know man of god evangelist and uh, billy graham was is still continues to be one of one of the most influential christian leaders in the world but his own son franklin graham okay he's the fourth of five children uh, he wandered away from the lord in his early years and you know he took to smoking and just living you know a life however he wished a life of rebellion and it was only at the age of 22 
after a period of rebellion that he made a real commitment to god so can you imagine how it must have been for billy graham to have a son who is rebellious a son who is not following god and everybody knows about it but the mother ruth graham she has written a book and the book is called prodigals and those who love them so she's written about her journey of raising up all the children but especially this wander the, the, this child who wandered away from god and how she persevered and you know how she uh, lived through trying times and how she prayed for her son and of course at the age of 22 he came back and god did powerful things in his life so franklin graham right now is the ceo of the billy graham evangelistic association and you know you can read so much about uh, the work that he has done he's met many us presidents personally uh, he also preaches across the world um and uh, he's associated with an organization called as the samaritans purse so a lot of good work has come through his life and he's written a book called rebel with a cause okay but the journey i just want us to see that these are all real stories uh it's because of families that continue to pray for such people that they were able to come back so how exactly should we pray for someone who has gone away from the lord that's the question and we are going to address that as i told us generally when people wander away from the truth it's because of external influence right and uh, it could be demonic as well uh, and that's what keeps them in bondage so apart from praying for them praying to god for them we can also engage in spiritual warfare so what is spiritual warfare you know jesus taught us he said i give you uh, the keys of the kingdom whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven it describes authority okay so jesus is saying i give you the authority to bind and loose so when we have authority as believers we have to use it you have to put it to use how to put it to use bind and loose bind and loose so apart from the usual praying we can pray and ask god god reveal to us what are the things that are binding this person so god may reveal you know it's a, a kind of deception in their minds or god may reveal that it's a kind of philosophy that is blinding you know their minds they're not able to understand christ they're not able to receive christ or god may reveal other things there's uh, you know some demonic influence of addiction or strife or uh, anger we don't know there could be some spirits behind it so the holy spirit will reveal it to us so when the holy spirit reveals it to us we exercise our authority and what do we do we bind or what is the meaning of bind bind means like jesus taught us you must bind the strong man so we bind the demonic power so that it will not torment this person so this is the additional warfare prayer that you and i have to involve in later we will study about spiritual warfare also there's one chapter on it but basic exercise authority and bind any demonic influence so this is also a part of praying for such people we can also pray and say god blindness on their eyes in second corinthians 4 verses 4 and 6 we read that satan you know what he does is he will blind the eyes of the people so we are preaching the gospel we are sharing the truth but they are not able to understand have you ever had an experience like that maybe many times you shared with some people but they are just not able to understand why satan does this job of blinding their minds their spiritualize so no matter how we try to share 
they'll not receive it. That's why even when we go for outreach, what do we do? We have one time here, uh, one Thursday, we are praying. Because prayer plays a very big role in tearing down the hindrances that demonic forces put in our way. So as a believer, we destroy the works of Satan, we bind the works of Satan, and then when we do our praying, we can see the effect of what we are praying. Right? Is that okay, everyone? You are understanding? Okay. So we need to do that. And then we can also pray like this. Cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So in 2 Corinthians 10, we read about this. Sometimes there are thoughts, there are arguments, reasonings that contradict the truth of God's word. And what the enemy does is he plants this in people's minds. They're stuck there. And it just becomes a stronghold. No matter how much you are trying to speak and share the truth, they can't receive it. Why? Because it's it's growing in its levels in the mind of that person. So what kind of prayer should we pray? Tear down. Tear down every wrong thought. God, we tear down these thoughts of, name it. Okay? Speak it. Speak that thought. And say, God, we tear it down. We tear down this, this, you know, the sense of rejection. We tear down the sense of whatever the Holy Spirit reveals to us. And you're doing some spiritual warfare and removing it from the way. So tear it down. And after that, what we can do is we can say, Holy Spirit, you speak to them. What is the work of the Holy Spirit? Let's quickly turn to John chapter 16, verses 7 to 11. John chapter 16, verses 7 to 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for it is go not away the comforter which will not com come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he come, he will reprove the world of sin, of the righteousness and of judgment, of sin because these be they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my father and they see me no more. Okay of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Okay, so there are three things that we see the Holy Spirit reveal. He convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So this is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit who can bring conviction. Now, conviction which uh, helps us realize that we are wrong. No, remember we said earlier that we should not try to keep telling people they are wrong and then they get the understanding. Instead, let the Holy Spirit do it. It's part of his ministry where he will convict people of sin. He'll say, what you're doing is not correct. They'll get the sense, yeah, what I'm doing is not correct. Or righteousness. Righteousness means what is right or how God is right, God's righteousness. They get the understanding of those things and judgment that, yeah, if we keep moving on like this, there's going to be a day, you know, when judgment will take place. How will we face that day? Let the Holy Spirit speak to them and help them understand these things. So what do we do? We say, come Holy Spirit, work in their lives. Come Holy Spirit, speak to them. That's a powerful prayer. Sometimes that's the best prayer that we can pray, right? Invite the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, you do your work and bring them to that place of decision. Okay, so we have done all our binding, losing, declaring, you know, casting down. And then we say, Holy Spirit, you take over. And we ask God, draw them to yourself, Lord. Bring them to a place of repentance 
and also we can speak over them you know give them a spirit of wisdom revelation and keep praying like this till the day that this person turns to the lord it's hard work we need perseverance but this this is how we go about it all right so as we keep doing this surely uh, we'll see a turn around but again ultimately you know god will do all the work and bring them to a place of decision but you know how god gives all of us free will and choice so hopefully the person will make the right choice make the right decision and uh, continue to follow christ okay so this is how we can pray for those who have gone away from the lord uh, i'll read out some of the declarations over home which are listed here in our notes but before that i'll come to justine's question any any questions about you know people who have gone away from the lord waywardness yes Mm, yeah. See, it's not that God is not working fast. It's just that there are hindrances, as I told you, like demonic hindrances, their own mindsets. When a person is not willing, it's not easy to, you know, get them to do anything. right and god does not force us so the willingness of the person matters and the readiness of their heart i think it depends mostly on that the readiness of their heart and only god knows you know when their heart will come to that place of uh, accepting god see god will not uh, short circuit anything there is this entire process because it's a person God is not going to force them and you know turn them around. That won't happen. They have to come to a place of faith, accepting Christ. That's why generally it ends up taking more, a little more time. And we talk about perseverance. Even when we read James chapter five, right from verses sixteen, there also, uh, like James, he says, when we are praying the prayer of uh, uh, persistent prayer remember he gives the example of elijah and says that the prayers of a righteous man the earnest prayers of a righteous man avails much it, he attaches it to the context of healing and waywardness because in both of these matters we do see a little bit of um, time or delay here and there so yeah Okay, great. Any other questions? All right. Um, yes. Um, what if we prayed and that you know the the person who's away from God um, died for some reason? Yeah. See, we know the right thing to do, which is to pray for them, and so yeah, we'll continue to pray. Now, why that person encountered death is a different question. It also involves the will of the person. See, it's like God can keep speaking to us, God can keep telling us, but we can also 
just be disobedient. It's not that God's not working. It's not that prayer is not working. It's not that Holy Spirit is not working. But the choice of the individual, they are rejecting it each time. So maybe they encountered a situation where they lost their life. But it's, it's not because the prayer didn't work or as you stated, the prayer goes waste. No, it doesn't. Surely God works on the basis of prayer. But uh, if they were not yielding, then you can't blame God for that. Yes. Okay. So then we will uh, move on. Okay, Justine is asking, is it okay to pray for someone you're not sure of marrying? Okay. So, uh, Justine, this is with regard to what we discussed earlier about making declarations and prayers for the spouse. Well, the way we could do this is in general, you just pray for your spouse, right? So I told one of us also, just you're praying for your future spouse. So as you're praying, you just pray like that. Now, this individual that you are not sure of marrying, you could just pray general prayers of blessing for them. So, you know, nothing stops us from praying prayers of blessing. And you're not sure that the other person that you're going to marry. Okay. So does that make sense? Even if you declare, it has to be God's will. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So when I'm saying do, that we should not uh, declare that he or she is the chosen one. So let God do his, uh, I mean, let God with his wisdom guide us. Okay. So Justin, is that okay? Or do you have a follow-up question to that? Please let us know. Okay. While we wait for uh, the question, We'll move on to some of the scriptures given here regarding the home. Okay, beautiful uh, scriptures, and I encourage those of you who are artistic, those who are those of you who you know sketch and draw and create things. Why why can't we put some of these scriptures right and put it up in your homes? Because it's like it it will be a reminder of the word of God, the word of blessing upon the home. So Psalm 118. Verse 15, it says, the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. So in our declaration, we say, my house is a, is a house. Tent means the dwelling place. So my house is a house filled with the voice of rejoicing and salvation. Remember, we said that when we declare in the situation or in reality, it may not be true. Maybe there's a lot of fighting, voice of fighting, voice of you know shouting at each other, voice of blaming, grumbling. That's all you can hear. But what is this? Faith declaration. Where we say, God, your word says that my house has the voice of rejoicing. So I will keep declaring it till all the shouting complaining, grumbling, changes into rejoicing. So make that declaration. My house has the voice of rejoicing. My house has salvation. God's saving power is there in my house. We see God's protection. We see God's uh, favor. You know, we, we see God's blessings. So all that comes under salvation. We make that declaration. And you, we will see the change. Right? As we keep declaring these things. There are other prayers here. So uh, Psalm 128. We can read. Okay. It, it talks about the family again. So every part of the family, the spouse, the children, and uh, <coughs> even the grandchildren. There are blessings upon everyone who is part of my home part of my family. Proverbs 3.33, 
he blesses the home of the just so uh, now that we've been made the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am the just and god blesses my home and never speak opposite of it what is the opposite what would be the opposite of he blesses the home of the just yeah like you know saying things like oh we are not blessed other people are blessed right without our knowledge sometimes we go ahead and speak these things out but what does the word say the word says god will bless my house why should he not bless my house my house is blessed god will bless my house so that becomes our declaration there are other declarations the house of the righteous will stand that means god will protect my family god will protect my generations god will protect my descendants we will stand my home will stand as a testimony to god's protection right god will establish us so we can pray this the house of the righteous will stand the tent of the upright will flourish so we'll thrive we'll do well the house of the righteous there is much treasure so all the references are there in the notes i'm not reading it out uh, so we can say that god you bless my house everything we need is available you know there are good things in my home we don't lack anything and look at this uh, last scripture isaiah 32 verses 18 to 19 my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places though hail comes down on the forest and the city is brought low in humiliation so this is god's promise of protection and prosperity so god is saying that many things may happen outside many things will happen in the city uh, many things may happen you know uh, in the community but it need not affect us it need not affect our home god is saying i will protect your house you will still thrive so there are declarations such as my house is a peaceful habitation we live in a peaceful house peaceful home and we declare that it says secure dwellings my house is secure god makes my house secure we are not you know he he is not thrown us open to danger but he protects us the angels of god surround our house these are the declarations my home is um safe okay and i don't have to worry god is my protector of course do the practical things that we need to just making declarations by being unwise doesn't help so we've done everything with wisdom over and above we speak god's word my house is a secure place and quiet resting place so when i come home as peace of mind quiet i can rest my house is a place where i can rest no it's not a place where i gather all anxiety and you know come back home and i feel even more tired no no that's not my home my house is a quiet resting place so in prayer even if our home doesn't look like anywhere close to this description right now we can declare it and surely the lord's word with its power will you know you will see the manifestation of that in our reality okay so it's all a matter of uh, praying with perseverance praying with persistence i think it's quite self explanatory actually so i don't even have to explain uh, but we've gone through the scriptures anyhow uh, but and are there any questions any comments if not we'll just pray and close all right so if there there aren't any then uh, we'll um, stop now
but i encourage us to make this a habit from our personal prayer time to praying together with others uh, let's let's also pray with declaration okay so for the on campus batch maybe one supernatural sunday we can just do declarations we can pray prayers of declaration so that we can practice how to actually flow in this all right so uh, for now we we'll wrap up could anyone pray maybe vinay vinay can you lead us in prayer lord we thank you for this uh, time lord jesus thank you for teaching us this wonderful truths from your word or thank you for teaching us uh, the declaration on our spouse on our children home and furthermore to the other believers and so many other things oh lord father lord we thank you for your word oh lord god and you are the god who promises and keeps those promises lord no word of yours will go to waste oh lord father or oh, jesus as the rain comes down and it wets the ground it the rain doesn't go to waste to oh lord father your word doesn't go to waste to oh lord father we thank you for all these beautiful promises of yours those declarations we thank you lord help us give us the wisdom to use this declarative verses oh lord jesus in our daily life oh lord father or oh, these are blessings that are given to us by you and help us to use these blessings in our everyday life for lord god lord we also pray for pastor nancy as she is teaching she is taking her time out preparing herself and coming here and teaching her teaching us lord we pray you bless her lord jesus lord fill her with your wisdom and knowledge your anointing more and more lord father in whatever she is doing you bless her lord father make her the head and not the tail in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you everyone god bless you and uh, have a wonderful week